we can now do zero shot update detection with the new YOLO e model. We're both going to see the documentation, a few examples, and also how you can run it in your own code with Autolytics. It's just a few lines of code. We can load in the model as we used to. This is an open vocabulary model, but also real time seeing anything. So it's basically just going to detect every single object in your environment that it can see in the video, in the image and so on. And it will basically both give you the bounding box, segmentation mask, and we will also get the label. So we can label anything that you throw at it. It's open vocabulary. You don't have to have any data and so on. It's gonna be slower compared to the other models where we need to go in and fine tune our models on our own custom data set. But this is really good for use cases where we just want to detect arbitrary objects. We can even prompt it, give text descriptions of what we want to go in and detect in our images. So just jump straight into the Autolytics documentation. If you go inside the models tab, we can see all the models that we have available. If you're familiar with the YOLO world model, it is kind of like similar to that. It's just a newer version and does a very good job. So at the bottom, we had the new model. So YOLO E, real time seeing anything. First of all, we're going to have an introduction. We can see we have text prompt, visual prompt. So this is actually like, and also prompt free. So just it takes anything that you can see in the images. A visual prompt is basically just where we give it a, an image, we give it a reference, and then it's gonna detect similar objects. We can also give it a text prompt. So we just prompted, I want to detect rocks, trees, rivers, animals, whatever object that you can see in the image or are interested in. First of all, you can read a bit more about it. It has some improvements over the YOLO World 2 on the Kogo dataset. You can gonna read a bit more about it here, but it has some improvements over the YOLO world model. It has both better like average position, but also faster inference speed. So you can basically just run more frames faster on the same hardware. You could actually get it to run pretty close to real time if you have like GPU acceleration. And also if you fine tune it on the Koga data set, the YOLO V8 large model here surpasses the YOLO V8 large by 0.1%. And also, if you're going to fine tune it on the Koga data set, it even surpasses the YOLO V8 model, but that really depends on your data set and so on, and it's still a significantly slower model. But again, you don't need to do any training and so on. You can just prompt it, fine tune it on a small data set. So this is, you can go and read more about, you can see the architecture overview, basically all the layers, the whole architecture and all layers. So here you can see some of the details and features that it, it implements. So we have this re-parametrization region text alignment, semantic activated visual prompt encoder, basically just for like throwing in prompts. And then it goes in and figure out, okay, what do you actually want to detect in the image? We also have laser region prompt contrast. So these are some of the features that you can go in and read more about. If you scroll a bit further down, we can see the available models, support task, and also operating mode. So we can both do inference, validation, training, and also export it with both the text visual prompt models and also the prompt free that just detects everything. So this is pretty cool. We can see that it supports instant segmentation, but with instant segmentation, we also get our bounding boxes. We get our segmentation mask. And again, you can run inference directly. You can train it. You can export it and use it in your own applications and projects. If you scroll a bit further down, we can see the user examples how we can fine tune it on a custom data set. We'll cover that in future videos. This video here, we're gonna see a couple of examples of how we can run inference. So this is the code down here, predict usage. <clears throat> we can also go ahead and do validation usage, but let's jump into my code editor and see how we can set it up, run a few examples and take a look at the results. Because it's pretty cool that we now have this model that can go in pretty much detect any object, it runs pretty fast, as you're going to see. I'm going to run it on my MacBook CPU. If you have GPU, it's gonna be significantly faster. We also have some YOLO-E performance comparisons here, as we mentioned a bit before, so we can see the inference speed. So this is just the YOLO-V8 and the YOLO-11 model, the large version of it. And then we have the new YOLO-E model. We can see the mean error positions, comparable performance to the large models of the other YOLO models and we can also see the inference speed. So the inference speed is pretty much for the YOLO-E model comparable to the large YOLO-11 model. So definitely go ahead, try it out, try to fine tune it as well. We're going to cover this way more in the future as well. So this is a very promising model, not only because we can just prompt it or give it examples, not really fine tune it for so long, but it's also pretty fast. So yeah, we can do comparisons with previous models and so on as well tons of details covered in here, but let's now jump into cursor, my code editor. 
I have a few videos that we're just going to run through. So we have this indoor environment of a living room from multiple different angles to see if it catches that. We have a video here with some animals and we also have this guy riding on top of a horse. I have a script. I basically just took the user example from the Ultra Lakes documentation. It's just a few lines of code, but here we also see how we can extract the results if you want to use it in your own applications and projects. So the first one here is the prompt free. It's just gonna take everything and detect that. The second one is gonna be a text prompt where we can guide it towards what it has to detect in the images. So I'm just going to comment this one here out. There we go. We import YOLO E from Autolytics. We specify which of the models that we want to grab. It's gonna download automatically in the first run. Then we just need to run a predict function on top of our model in the exact same way as you can use any of the other models that we saw in the left side inside the Autolytics documentation. You just need to swap it out here, use the same predict functions, the same arguments. You're gonna get the results in the exact same format as well. And then you can use them in your own application and projects. So if you want to train models, if you want to run inference, test it out, do evaluation, do some benchmarking on your own custom data set or just the projects that you're working on, just swap out the model. You can even swap them out with your custom trained ones as well. Then you can just test, just swap out the models and you can test three, four, five models pretty much at the same time or without doing anything compared to just having to change out the models, set up new frameworks, set up new code bases to be able to test out models. This is significantly faster if you're doing like proof of concepts or basically just whatever you're doing, this is the easiest way by far. So right now, let's actually go in and try to just run the code. So right now we have the boxes. So that's gonna be our, like this, we'll get an error. There we go. We have a model, we want to predict, we want to show it while it's running inference. We're also gonna save it to a video file and we want to show our confidence score or we actually like set that to false but you can say it's a true and it's gonna show the confidence score as well. This is the video, prompt free video. It's just gonna be the indoor environment that we pass it through first. Let me go up and open a new terminal. First of all, if you get any errors and so on, make sure that you have the newest version of the Ultralytics package. So let's go in and see pip install, Ultralytics. Again, you'll just have to run this command if you don't have it installed already. If you have it installed, make sure that you just upgrade it just to be 100% sure that you have the new model, you have everything ready to go. So now we can see we have this one here. The only thing that we need to do is just Python and my script to call run.py could be your project or your own script. We hit enter, it's gonna open up the application here. It's gonna download the model that's done with 70 megabytes. It's just gonna take like 10 seconds. 50% now, and we will see the inference results after. It's only doing this once here, basically just downloading the weights. If they're available in your directory, it's gonna do it automatically. There we go. Now we see we get a chair, kitchen table, we get a carpet, we even get the carpet with a very nice segmentation mask under. We have the chair, we have like a cocktail table, carpet switches a bit back and forth between that one. We even segment the lamp all the way with the cable up to the ceiling. We have the shelves in the background. We even get some objects on the on the on the back of the shelves. So this is pretty cool because these are very small objects that we have in our image frame. This looks pretty cool. In the output, you can also see an example of how you can extract the result. But if we just go inside the code again, we're already extracting it. So right now we can just go in and display our results here. So it's basically just gonna print that out. This is how you can use it in your own application and projects. So you'll get your bounding box and you'll get your class. You can go in and, and draw your own rectangles. You can go in and set up alerts. You can do some filtering. Uh, you can pretty much do whatever you want with your classes or trigger an alert if a specific object is detected in your scene. Let's try out the other one here. So both have the first one and the second one from a different angle. And let's see if that's similar. So we just have to put a one here, swap the video. It's also gonna save it. So inside our runs directory, we have our predict two, and this is basically gonna be the video. You can grab this, show it to your friends, colleagues, how this model performed both on any video, any model, and pretty much just in a few lines of code. So it's trying to re just rerun Python run that time. There we go. Now we can see we get it from another angle. Don't get the carpet right now from this angle. We get the chair, couch, really good. We get the chair, cabinet, even the lamp here is still pretty good. We get the vent at the top. 
house plant, very nice segmentation mask around the whole house plant. And we also get the bounding boxes, so we get everything that we need directly from this model and it acts like runs fairly fast. I'll probably say a few frames per second, but this is only running on my MacBook CPU. So if you use CUDA acceleration, it's gonna be faster at the benchmark results that we saw inside the documentation. And remember, this is also compared with the large YOLO model. So if you're running the nano or small, it's gonna run significantly faster, but it also have a harder time detecting smaller objects here in the background, as we can, for example, see like inside the shells is detecting cups, which is pretty awesome. Like that's just a very good job that it's doing here. So I'm trying to just run the other example that we have as well. So we both have the prompt free, just gonna detect everything. Let me comment this out. There we go. Let me go down and grab this code instead. So now we're gonna load the same model here, pretty much, but without the PF. So this is the prompt free that's just gonna detect everything. The other one is our text prompt where we need to guide it as well. So we have the two examples. First of all, let's just do the camel walking. We set the classes, model set classes, and then we can call a predict method again on the new video. We still just wanna show it and also save it. Now we can show the confidence as well because we're only gonna be only interested in pretty much the camels walking, not just everything that we can see in our image. So Python run. We swapped out the model. We came up with a new use case for the tech prompt. It's gonna download this model as well. This is only 67 megabytes. Remember to set the classes here. It's basically just gonna be the prompt that you want to throw into it. And we can see here, it even does some auto checks of different stuff that I need. So we also need clip installed. So it's automatically gonna install clip and run it after. So now we can see that this is actually like almost a 600 megabyte model. So mobile clip BLT. And this is basically just for taking the prompt, taking the image, getting it into the same image space. So this is basically just taking the prompt and also the image and getting it into the same embedding space so we can actually like match your prompt with the detections that we're getting from the model. So now after it has downloaded the model, we can see we have these camels walking around. We get a pretty nice segmentation mask around it. Now we're also showing the confidence score. So that can be very useful as well. You can go in and do confidence thresholding. So if it's a below some confidence score, you can basically just filter them out. Now we can see when it's occluded, it has some problems, sometimes it gets it, sometimes it misses it. We also see this camel is coming in on the right side. It just needs a bit more before it gets detected. So yeah, not perfect, but it's still a very, very good model as you can see here without any fine tuning. This is just zero shot on the go based on a prompt. Let's try out the other example that we have as well with the black horse but we can try to even make it a bit more complicated. I have another prompt here. So try to just grab man sitting on horse. Let's try to just see if it's able to have that understanding and reasoning about what's going on in the image as well. So let's run it, rerun it here. Now we'll see the results. Again, we've just been running through a couple. So now we've got the camel. Make sure that you change the video as well. So we have text from video and then we have text from video one. Let's rerun it. This is how easy it is to swap out the video, the model, anything, man sitting on a horse. And now we can see we pretty, pretty much just follows it while they're walking through this river. Segmentation mask is pretty cool. So man sitting on horse, let's try to make it even more complicated. So maybe go in and say cowboy, cowboy sitting on a black horse. Let's try to see if it's capable of doing that. Let's rerun it. Now we can see that we, we got the detection to start with. Sometimes we miss it now, we get it sometimes. Maybe you can't see that it's a, it's a cowboy. Maybe it's even in Indiana. Now we can probably see it with the cowboy hat. We have the black horse. Now we can see we get some misses and so on because it has to do this search between our text embedding and our image embedding when it get it into the same space with the mobile clip. So we're still using mobile clip would be better if you use like a larger clip model, but it will also be significantly slower and not be able to work in real time. You can see this is slower as well because it needs to do more reasoning with these embeddings. So this is a pretty cool model. You can go ahead and test it out with Autolytics. It's available in there, just a few lines of code using the exact same way as here. 
Test that on a bunch of use cases, throw down in the comment section if you have anything, share, uh, share it on LinkedIn, whatever. Show some cool videos that you can do and projects with Ultra Analytics. Hope to see you guys and want the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.